Hello everyone, NadLabs here. Today we're going to be making this uh, simple project where we can drag our mouse from any point on this map and this uh, little creature over here will be able to move to it following like its own path that it decides. And um, that's essentially what we're going to be making. And you can apply this to a kinematic body 2D, an area 2D, if you modify the code a bit, and I'll explain how to do that. And this is essentially what we're going to be making. It's not that complex, surprisingly. And there are a couple of tutorials online that explain how to do this. and I did draw inspiration from them. I'll leave some resources down below, but I feel like they were missing. A, like I had to, I had to remake it myself without watching the tutorial. Um, but because I didn't understand like what they were saying, they gave me a really good starting point. But like, I, I just felt like they were missing a couple of things that would make it harder for a beginner to understand as I myself am a beginner as well. So I'm going to hopefully fill in those gaps and um, let's just straight jump straight into it. Now the scene tree is kind of complex. I, I'm not going to say it's complex because that scares a couple of people. I'm going to say the scene tree is a little bit crowded. We have a game scene, which is our regular no 2D. We have a, t a navigation 2D. We have a thing to move and we have a line 2D. You don't even need the line, but if you want to see the path, that really does help. A thing to move is just a kinematic player and that's essentially it. And navigation 2D has to be the parent of a tile map. And this tile map has to, has to have a tile selected. So you can just uh, make your tile map. In fact, I'll just do it from scratch. So if you want to make your tile, you just go to new single tile. You just select anything. You go to your snap options and then you set it properly. Um, what's the cell size? I, I put 16 by 16 for the cell size. Um, so I'm just going to do snap options 16 by 16. And I'm just going to grab a random spot. And you can see your, you see them all coming up black, even though my mouse cursor has a blue one. It's because I went over here to my modulate and I was able actually to change the color. So that's essentially it. Um, let me just do a couple of more things like this. I don't know. Um, so we can have our tile over here. And of course, I forgot. We have to have our navigation. You have to make sure that you select this navigation tab and you want to just highlight it so it's fully covered. And that's something I want to make certain because if you do it like this, um, you can see that our navigation is still going to work. I thought it wasn't going to work. But the reason I thought it wasn't going to work is because Godot actually needs them to be fully connected. So. Um, let me just delete that. Uh, they actually need to be fully connected. And you can see it works without it. But to get the best results, I would say connect everything up. And you want to make sure it is the child of a navigation 2D. That's it. Now, if we hop over to our scene tree and look at the script inside, we can see that it's blank. And of course it is because we'll have to code it. So we're going to have to get a couple variables. We're going to have to get our navigation. 2D. We're going to, have, going to get a navigation 2D, which is essentially just uh, this over here, we just want to get reference to it. We want to get our line, which is our line. And it, it just has a width of 10. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's the default. Yeah, that is the default. And I didn't really change anything with the line. It's just a regular old line. It has a size of zero. Like it, it doesn't have to be, there's no property to be changed here. We have a first point and second point. If we think from first principles, how to get points. If we think about how to get points, if we click in space, like if we click on our screen, how do we get a point anywhere? Well, we could basically say something like, uh, just grab the first point and if you listen to my mouse clicks um in fact i'll try to bring my mouse closer if i click and then move the mouse um yeah you can tell i'm moving it with my hand and then let go uh you can see that we'll actually get something like like this so if i click so i'm going to click and i'm going to let go you can see that um we we start off with our first point let me just make this way our first point and then our second point and we can actually measure that because in godot there's something called input pressed and input just unpressed. Okay, it's not input just unpressed, it's input just release, but essentially it's the same idea. And what we're basically saying here is in our input just action pressed, we're going to click. Uh, the second we click, just pressed it, the second we just clicked it, we're going to set our first point equal to our get more global mouse position and our line dot points. So our lines points or the array of points that this line has, we're going to set it equal to an empty array. And then when we let go of the mouse, we basically want to say a couple of things. We want to say that the second point is going to be where we release this click event. We're going to set our array path to, uh, we're going to make an, a variable array called our array path. And we're basically going to say navigation 2D, get us a simple path from first point to the second point, just pass in true. Uh, we'll see what happens if you pass in false and set the line dot points equal to this array path. And if you want to, you can print out the array path. And when we run the scene, just those lines of code, you can see that we get a fully functioning set up uh, from point A to point B and it figures everything out for us. We don't have to do anything. If 
If we type in false, on the other hand, F5, not F4, you can see that we get a we get a lot more stuff printed out because we're actually going as close as possible to the tile map, which is not something I, I, I liked it. I mean, it's pretty interesting if you want to do like the most efficient way possible. But I think what's more natural looking is if you type in true and if you control S and save the scene and run again, Godot will just automatically update, which is amazing. I, I love that feature. And you can see it just it just works. So we have the way that we, we already know the path. The path is clear, but how are we going to get this thing to move? This this thing to move. How are we going to get this thing to move to actually move along that path? Well, that's pretty simple. We already have the path. We just have to tell it to move across each point. So we can start off by getting a couple of uh, variables in here. We can say we can say there's a path variable. So this is actually the same path. We just have to pass it into our player or this thing to move because we want it. We want the thing to move to actually know what the path is. We're also going to set an index to zero. And uh, over here in the script, that's actually how we're going to be setting those. Uh, we're going to be setting these variables. We're going to set them with these values. And that's basically how we're going to do that. When we release our mouse, we're going to set these variables to the R path, which is just the array path. And we're going to set its index equal to zero just to double check. And if we do it multiple times, we don't have to restart the scene. Or we can just set it to zero as soon as we let go. Because of course, we're going to be like, let's say this was one path, right? Because it is. And this is another path. We're basically, once we're done moving along this path, the index is whatever this index is like I don't know 15 16 and 17 I don't know but this is the, like the last index if we don't set it back to zero it will start again from like the 17th point which is somewhere around here and it will just move this much like that's not correct we want it to start it from we want it to start over here if you have any questions about that leave it in the comments because I don't know if I explained that to help you understand if you didn't understand that's what the comment section is for I will respond to it and of course we're going to be setting our thing to move global position equal to the beginning point because we want to start where the path starts, right? We don't want to start in the middle of nowhere. And um, so now we can hop over to our thing to move script. What we're basically going to be saying is every frame we're going to be checking because the physics process function checks something every frame. We're going to be checking if there's a path. If there is a path, let's make a velocity variable. And if the index that we're currently on is less than the path size minus one, the reason we have to do minus one is because uh, Godot gets the entire path and like it counts it from like one, two, three, four, but we want it to count from zero, one, two, three, four. And the only way we can do that is by subtracting one at the end. And if it is, if this condition is true, we're basically going to be saying the velocity is going to be equal to path index plus one minus path index. What does that even mean? If I hop over to paint, uh, let's say the path is something like this. Okay, I'm going to make like really sharp defined points. If this is our, let's say this is point one and this is point two. Uh, oops, okay, point two. By us saying path minus path, uh, path index plus one minus path index, that's basically saying that's saying just grab the um, just subtract these two uh, just subtract these two values, and we have our vector, and we can do vector maths with this, and we can actually set this to our velocity because this is going to be pointing in this direction. And imagine if we tell our uh, thing to move or our player or whatever, um, you're going to move across. I thought I had the box tool. I thought I had the box tool selected. Hey, let's say we want it to move in this direction. Well, we can basically say that. And that's essentially what we get when we say uh, path index plus one minus path index. We're basically telling it to move across that path. And then we're going to ask if if these points are close to each other, if where we are is close to the path index we're trying to get to, which is a function we will set up later. If we are close to this point, if, we are, if our global position is close to the path index plus one, increase increment the index. And that basically says, okay, we're going to look at the next point, which is over here. I, I, I can't circle it because then I'll lose track of this. In fact, I'll just move that guy over there. And um, I'm just going to highlight this one. So if we are close to this point, so let's say um, this is our player and we get close to this blue point, the index will increase. And now we will be looking at this direction. We will be looking at this direction and we will be moving in that and we'll be moving down here. I am so sorry for the iPad ding. I am Sorry. We're basically going to be moving our green player in this direction. If that didn't make sense, please leave a comment. I'll try my best to explain. And that's essentially all we have to do. And if if we if this condition isn't true, which means we are done our entire path, just stop moving. And over here, you might be wondering that, yeah, okay, good job, Nad Labs. You're subtracting the index from the, the future index from the index we're currently on. But isn't that a really large vector? Like for example, over here, it wouldn't that make a really large vector? At, I thought I had the line tool selected. Yeah, that would make a really large vector. In fact, you're correct. That would that would be horrible for our game. 
I can't believe I didn't have the line tool socket. But essentially, this is going to be the vector. But we can normalize the vector and multiply it by a random constant, like 200 uh, I found works well for the kinematic body 2D when you're using movement slide. And that's essentially it. Now, you might be wondering, what is this are, you, are these close to each other function? Like, what is this? And why are you passing an A and B? Well, Godot actually does this. And we don't have to make it. But it's essentially, if um, uh, global position dot is equal approximately to path index plus one, right if we do this it will work sometimes i found at least in my experimentation like it sometimes works like i'm, I'm not sure like wh what are the perfect conditions to get it to work but it like it doesn't pick up the fact that these vectors are close to each other or at least it doesn't pick it up to a degree that i would like it to i would like it to be less sensitive so that's why we have to make our own function and we're going to be delving into a little bit of vector math so please hang in i'll try my best to explain it so in the are these close to each other function, all we're going to be saying, all we're going to be saying is the res we're going to have to return. So this is actually how you return stuff in Godot. Like this is just an arrow and it's going to say we're returning a Boolean value, which is a true or false value. And the, the Boolean value we're going to be returning is this res, res variable. So this res variable is equal to false by default. So of course, we're going to say these are not close to each other by default because we haven't checked yet. We're going to set a margin variable, and this can be your like sensitivity. So Godot's margin, I'm not sure what it is, but it's really small. So we can actually increase it. And then we're going to compute this scary line. It, it looks scary, but it actually isn't. It's actually pretty beautiful. And then if this if this condition is true, whatever this condition means, we're going to set it equal to true. Now, judging by the name of the function, you can probably guess that this function has something to do with measuring the distance. And that's absolutely correct. If we break this function down into bite-sized pieces, we can see that we're actually, and let's get rid of these absolute signs because um, why, why, why do we need them? And let's get rid of, uh, let's get rid of these parentheses. If we look at this comment, it's basically saying a dot X, which is our global position dot X minus our B dot X, which is our, uh, the point we're trying to get to is less than margin. This is essentially saying something like, um, this is essentially saying, if we look at this, I'm running out of colors here, I'm all right. Uh, is basically asking what is the distance between our player at the moment and the goal in the x direction only and this is important that we get the x direction only because let's say our player is over here then the x direction to the goal is actually a little bit larger so i should have done that in a different color the x direction to the goal is a little bit larger you can see that this pink line let's say this pink line is the the y the y spot the the, the y uh value of the goal um so it's a lot larger and this will actually not pass true this will, however, because we are close to it. And that's essentially what this left side is. The reason we have to do absolute everywhere is because we want to make sure we get the absolute difference. The absolute, absolute. what does ABS even mean? It returns the absolute parameter. What does that mean? It means the positive value. So if it's negative one, just convert it to one. If it's like negative 74, it's, it's going to become 74. So we're basically getting the absolute difference on our X. And the same idea is true for the Y. We're just going to get, and in fact, I'll just move to a cleaner area. So let's say uh, this is the goal. And this is where we are at right now. We want to get the difference between our Y positions. So the difference between our Y position right now is, is like, I don't know, like, let's say that's 50 pixels. The difference between our X position is around like 50 pixels. If the player is over here, right? Let's say the player moves over here. Then the difference between our X, our X, no, line tool, line tool, I'm pretty sure I clicked it. But the difference between our X direction is a lot larger. This is the X, this is the X, this is the Y. Uh, the difference between our x is a lot larger than it was before but the difference between our y is a lot smaller now but if let's say our player is over here right um the same players um so i'm gonna make it a square let's say the player is over here then the x direction is a lot smaller now or at least the x absolute difference is a lot smaller the y absolute difference is a lot larger and let's say the player is right over here well then let me just zoom in if the player is right over here, then the X absolute difference is really small. And the Y absolute difference is really small as well. And I'm hoping you can see through the example that this is how we were going to be calculating if we are near something. And now that when we run the scene, we can see that this Godot image or whatever we're trying to move will follow the path perfectly and stop once it's there. And the reason I said we have to set the index back to zero, like I said over here, the reason we have to do that is because if we don't, then, um, in fact, I'll just show you what happens if we don't, um, you can see that, uh, it doesn't move because it already thinks it's at the it's at the end. But if I go back and control S save, you can see that it'll start working again. And that's just a feature I really love in Godot. You could just save 
your script and everything will just start working again. Like if I if I type in print hello afterwards and I try again, hello will pop up. Like that's just amazing. I don't know. I find that really cool. And yeah, that's basically it. That's how you can move something. If you want to change it to an area 2D, um, what you can do is you instead of saying move and slide, you can say uh, global position dot add this velocity. In fact, I'll actually do that right now. I will straight up just convert this into an area 2D. In fact, I'll do that right now. I'll just convert my entire script to an, to follow for an area 2D. And you can see that um, I can just do global position, global position plus equals and then velocity. Of course, I want to make this constant a lot smaller. Um, everything should work. I mean, that's the only difference. Yeah. And now we have our um, player or whatever you want to call it moving and that should not have happened. I think it's because I increased the uh, speed in the middle of it. Yeah, I increased the speed in the middle. Oh, oh yes. Okay. The reason it's not stopping is because if it goes too fast, it will actually not pick up the difference. So this is, um again, you have to play around with the values for the game you're making because you can see at a slower speed, it will stop. Right. But when it was five, it didn't. I was so scared because I thought I broke something or something like that. But if you increase the, the margin, you will get it to work at a faster speed. So let me just speed it up. So you will get it to work at a faster speed. But the only issue is it will deviate from the path eventually because this margin that we're setting affects how it affects uh, where we pick up. Because remember, we're checking every physics process function. So you can see that. Yeah, eventually it will not like Godot will not pick that up. Sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. So you have to play around with the speed of your character. And this will happen for the kinematic body 2D as well. Like I'll, I'll, I'll change my script back to show you that it's, it will happen with the kinematic body 2D. It doesn't matter what you do it with. You have to be mindful of the speed and the, the rate at which Godot is processing this information. So if I, if we do the, if we do the process function instead of that, uh, you can see that, um, Again, it won't pick it up because it's just too fast. Like it doesn't pick up the difference and it's just an inherent limitation of Godot. I'm not entirely sure how to make it better, but uh, this is just the way I've done it. And you can see that even though I'm using the kinematic body 2D, I'm still doing the uh, uh, global position dot add, which is not recommended for a kinematic body 2D, but you could do it if you wanted to. Um, Godot doesn't recommend it. And of course it's going really slowly now. Um, I don't know, let's do 300. And you can see that Godot, it will just move around. And that's essentially it. And how you can make, uh, uh, how can you, how you can use navigation 2D for your game to help give your tile maps and enemies a lot more intelligence. And that's all I have to say. If you have any questions about anything, please leave them in the comments. I will respond to them. I'll try my best to help. And with that being said, have an amazing day. or points on a line. Uh, sorry, this is from a previous tutorial. Um, if we think about its bite-sized bite, bite pizza,